This is the family farm I grew up on. In 97, at age 17, I joined the Army as a bulldozer operator. Growing up on a farm and having access to farm equipment, you know, it was just a natural fit for, uh, for something for me to do for the military. Toward the end of that contract, the Twin Towers fell. Because of that, uh, I signed a re-enlistment contract so that, I could, so that I could do my part. In 2004, I was deployed uh, to the Sunni Triangle. The rules of engagement were, were very confusing and you know, it was really difficult to find on your moral compass whether or not they were right or wrong. And regardless of how you feel about them now, they can't be undone. You know, whether it be getting attacked during a convoy or hearing rockets fly over your head and seeing them land in a tent full of uh, people's loved ones, but it's like someone slips a brick inside your rucksack. I can carry a brick, I can carry several bricks. One at a time you don't notice, but when you return home, you find yourself buried in rubble. Post deployment, I started having panic attacks and I didn't understand what was happening. I was diagnosed with, of course, PTSD, agoraphobia, bipolarism, and anxiety disorder. And I was prescribed a pharmaceutical cocktail. I lost my first job back in the real world because I was unable to build effective relationships with customers and co-workers. I lost my second job because I missed too many work days. On multiple occasions, I would get this voice inside my head that would tell me that the world would be better off if I wasn't in it. I was admitted into a psych ward I think this was probably my low point. Previously, I was a non-commissioned officer, a sergeant in the U.S. Army serving in a theater of combat. I was responsible for my life and the lives of others. And I can't be trusted with shoelaces now. My life continued to crumble. Divorce followed by giving up custody of my daughter. My home went into foreclosure. I ended up living back on the family farm that I grew up on. My brother and his wife, who are both Iraq veterans, were gracious enough to take me in. This is the trailer we lived in at the time. Uh, they took me in and helped me um, try to come to terms with things that were happening. Things were not going well. Fortunately, I finally caught a break and that break was when I met a man named Pete Wilhelm. Pete teaches Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and he is also a former Marine and a combat veteran himself. And he brought me into his academy and took me under his wing and he just continued to invest in me. The reason it was so effective was because while I was on the mat training, while we were grappling, I didn't have time to think about Iraq, because if I did, I would get choked out. Pete introduced me to Chad Robichaw. Chad was in town speaking at the assembly, and he came to Triton Fight Center. Uh, he invited me out to California to experience the Fight Club, and I was reluctant for a long time, but um, by the grace of God, I made it out there. These guys were giving me biblical scripture in terms that I could understand. They were speaking to me tactically. They were talking about identifying a common enemy and escaping, advancing position, and counterattacking. Four days into this program, I found myself doing something that I hadn't done in a decade, and that was praying. When I was in Iraq, I came to the conclusion that I couldn't be a man of God 
and a soldier serving in this area both at the same time. So I literally took my Bible and put it in a footlocker along with my connection with Christ. With this knowledge that they shared with me and this biblical blueprint of what manhood should look like, I was able to re-establish my connection with God. Since I've been back, I've, I've been improving my life and I'm trying to reach other veterans with this message. I think my wife really said it best. Since you came home from Mighty Oaks, you carry yourself differently and I'm really proud of you. What I'm most thankful for is a supportive wife and daughter. I'm thankful for this church family. I'm thankful for the men at Mighty Oaks who hold me accountable and uh, I'm thankful for the tools that they've given me and most of all I'm thankful that God gives second chances. <laughs>